Yeah, so reality is this. When you first get out the joint, you sit there, wait with your bags. Your reality still hasn't set in. Your P.O. comes. Well, on I, on I sell, your P.O. come get you. It is going to give me. Cats get out and don't have to see their P.O. until 24 hours. That's regular parole. I got off on I sell. So your P.O. comes swoop you up. Now, Minnesota is one of the few states that still has it because most states have already ruled that it doesn't have no, it has no, it doesn't help you uh, uh, rehabilitate or, or come back into society. Or Minnesota still uses it, and they do a lot of stuff backwards just because they can. But you know that PO comes, uh, PO comes get me, swoops me up, takes me to the halfway house, drops me off. Uh, don't even meet my family. Meet the PO. PO drops me off, goes to whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, tells me. Uh, this is the second, this is the second one. I'm jumping because the first time I get out, I actually has, I have a, have a hold that sends me to another county. So I sit in the county jail. So I don't want to talk about that one because it's not, not everybody has holds when they first come out. Most people come out on regular ISR where the PO comes, swoops them, takes them to the halfway house. So that's why I'm talking about the second one. He comes, swoops me, takes me to the halfway house. And, um, well, I don't even go to the halfway house this joint. Another county takes me to the workhouse. So I leave the joint, go to the workhouse, as that's their housing situation. So that's reality. I just hit you with the... So my reality is 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 not going to a halfway house, but going to a workhouse. Now, most people who've been in the joint are going to say, well, you signed for that. The only option I had at that particular time was, because Anoka County was my county of commit, is to go to Nunca County and go to the workhouse. Now I've changed since then. Now you can go to any county you want, as long as you have housing in that in that county. You can submit it. You if you're in a county accepts you, you can go there. They changed it up a lot. Before you could only go to your county commit. Now you can go to any county. But at this particular time, when I was getting out, I had to. I, Hennepin County wasn't accepting me. I had to. I got. I wanted to leave, so I accepted. The workhouse, doing no, okay, it was all my choice. I accepted the workhouse, thinking the workhouse, um, they had a, I didn't know what it was. I, I know what the workhouse is if you committed a crime and you're going through the workhouse and they send it to your workhouse. I'm figuring I'm getting out on parole. It should be a little bit different. It was no different. It was just like I committed a crime. They had me on everything. You know what I'm saying? I had to, uh, I was basically, the people who were doing their little workhouse sentence, I was no different than them. So you gotta understand, I go from prison to to pr back to prison or or some minimalistic version of prison, right? So I'm gonna deal with it though because I feel like that structure at that particular time is the best is the best for me. But that here's my reality shook shook, shook it shook again because I'm figuring that the uh, that that somehow because uh, uh, my case murder manager don't know what's going on. I can't talk to anybody. Uh, uh, about the whole situation of what's going on, so I, I, in my mind, I'm saying, why would they? But it should be, it should be at least equivalent to the halfway house. I mean, yeah, the halfway house, I was locked down, but still had a TV or access to a TV. I still had could have visitation on a regular basis. I still could have all those things um, uh, available to me. Don't get me wrong, the workhouse was uh, like that in in its, in its variations, but I mean, it was people that would, who didn't go have to go to the joint. It was doing workhouse time, and and it because they had committed a crime. I had or done did my time. Now you got me back in the workhouse, like I committed a crime. So it was just kind of hard for me. Like I said, it shook my reality. It, you know, being around guards and everything. It was a good situation because I guess um, it kept me uh, from. I had uh, another thing that you got to realize once you get out. Uh, the, the best thing you had was COs around you because once you get out, once they they give you that little rope, they use that rope to hang you. With so once I was in a when I was in a workhouse, I was coming in, and when I was in, I didn't have to worry about my PO because I had these guards around me, right? Because the problem is, is once you get out, and you say you go to your halfway house, and your and your halfway house doesn't have any supervision, and you're kicking it. You know, the PO could ro ro roll up on you and say whatever he wants to say. Uh, you just came in or uh, where uh, somebody seen you right, or what. I just had that that accountability that he couldn't, the structure that he couldn't really mess with. So that was, that was, that's just like I said, when it comes to reality, what you see, what you, what you sit back in a joint and think about, 
and 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 uh, what actually happens when you come out is huge, you know. So, like I said, a plan is good because at least a plan, even though everything was kind of my reality, my it's, they call it disconnect. My reality, what I thought was gonna happen in the joint. And my reality when I got out was too different. I at least had a plan. So as my life started to come back on track, I was able to apply it. And it it it, it, it worked and it didn't work. Um, like shout out to all my guys in the joint, you know what I'm saying? Stillwater, you know, B West, uh, A West, you know, the Wild Wild West, B West, B, B East, you know. All my guys doing time. Cass, Cass ain't gonna never see the light of day. Shout out, shout out. I know how it is up in there. Uh, Oak Park Heights, 23, ACU unit, motherfucking complex one, complex two, complex for all the complexes. Shout out, shout out to all my guys up in there. You know, it's, it's it, I understand, man. It's it's difficult. It's difficult. I was watching this this guy on the um, on the uh, you little YouTube channel. And uh, he was just talking about how the joint is changing, how the, how how it's flipping, um, um, and I like I said I'm, I'm seeing in the joint a little bit, uh, just because uh, some of these topics are relevant. I think the whole the conversation I want to have. I just got a, co a call from one of my uh, one of my guys up in a uh, uh, in a in a spot. He called me, and he was asking me like, "What are you gonna cover?" You know uh, who are you trying to talk to? Who you who's who's your demographic? Who's trying to trying to who's who, who trying to reach? I was like, you know, universally, I like to reach everybody, but really, I like to educate these POs, COs, you know, these 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 uh these these police officers, you know, um, anybody who's got anybody in a joint, you know, what I'm saying, who thinks that it's casting there, uh, 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 living it up, or, or or they should be there, or or. You know, first and foremost, let me let you know my ideology is there's no need for prison. There's no need for prison. This, uh, uh, this, this, this gets right back to to the young cats in a joint and this flip in a prison. The reason I brought it up. There's no reason for prison. Prison at, 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 the, at the most rudimentary understanding of it is economic benefits for Caucasians. It has no benefits for African Americans other than being a uh, 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 a, a producer, a product, uh, 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 the the oil, the 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 lubricant in the system. They need them. They need these individuals in the system to make the system work. That's the only reason for it. Because we can talk about criminality. We could talk about. We could talk about. We could talk about uh, uh, people needing to have some closure. We could talk about all those things all day long. But then, for, for, first and foremost, I need to talk to the person who's pointing the fucking finger. That's saying these individuals need to be placed in prison. Now, now there's some individuals who need to be uh, 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 placed uh, in, a, in, a, in a box or or or, or, or be, be controlled, and and that's a whole another understanding of uh, criminal justice and all different things. But they also have a thing that's called restorative justice, and we can leave, we can use both of them. So when I say a person should be paid in the box, put on time out, or whatever. Yeah, there's play, there's ways to deal with individuals, but disproportionately, the the prison system's been utilized to 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 to, to attack individuals who aren't Caucasians, right? Because if it was doing anything other than that, they would be reforming the system, right? So so all these individuals who at these intellect education edu, edu, people who've been educated, who've got doctor in front of their names, who who is trying to explain the system to you, they're nothing but liars. You know what I'm saying? If not, they're part and, par they're part and partials to the system. Um, they're being utilized by the system. I'm coming here to get some clarity to, to, to it. And the reason I start talking about the youth and how the prison system is flipping, think about it like this. If anybody's done anything in the sales uh, or sold a product or financed the product or did anything, and anybody who understands slavery, because uh, in order to understand for you, uh, in order in order for you to understand prison, you must understand the economic basis to it, and understand this system is uh, solely a capitalist system that's built on capitalism. Um, and that's another whole another conversation. But uh, when you understand that the whole system is built on built on capitalism, and understand by placing a person in the cell, think about a battery. What does a battery have to make it operate? Cells, right? S cells produce power. Sales produce energy. Sales produce a lot of things, but you have to have individuals. You have to have 
some type of chemical reaction within that cell for it to happen. That's abstract. The, the reality of it, you put black people or non-white people into these cells disproportionately to make this economy work, right? Prison economy. It's so it's solely it's separate, but it's one within this whole United States of America, right? The prison system, they they the, the whole conversation you're gonna have is that X, Y, and D, we have a victim and the state has taken on the the, the the person to in order to, to exact revenge from the victim. Most victims nowadays are white females, right? A black female doesn't get the same type of justice a white female get, right? The the person they they envision of being a person who's being not just the, the sole person is a white female. The person exacting the vengeance is a, a Caucasian male. So you got this Me Too movement who's who utilizing their power to to right the wrongs from all these males who've vin, uh, who who victimized them, right? So the prison system is uh uh. uh is almost the scapegoat, uh, so they can utilize. They can plank this. They have the stereotypical individual who's the villain. And he's the he's the African American, the African American male who's the rapist, the criminal, the drug dealer, and all these things that's been that that's being portrayed through through television, through through books, through I mean whatever, through even intellectuals' conversations. You know, they would deal with the fact that that inherently this. Uh, black uh, race that they've created is um, is um, uh, predisposed to some criminality. However, um, my, back to the, the topic, the topic is economic basis of prisons. And the reason why there's so many youth now coming into prison, they're, they're, they're sending so many youth to so much time, is that these judges, these probation officers, these parole officers, these CEOs, these, 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 these individuals within the structure, their whole livelihood is based on a youth being sentenced at age 18 to the rest of his life. That means that that dude has a job. He's going to be able to retire. That dude's going to be still, he's going to be able to retire. His son's going to be able to come back to the prison system, work in the prison system. And that dude's going to be still there living in prison for a crime that he committed when he was 18. I mean, come on, think about it. I mean, there's no rat. That's the reason I'm against the prison system because it makes no sense. You're trying to tell me if a, a dude who commits a crime at age 18 can never be rehabilitated. So they changed the law and say, well, we can't commit uh, individual juveniles to life sentences. We're just going to give them 99 years, 66 years, 70 years. We want them out of society. I mean, come on, man, think about it. And it, it the reason. Uh, black folks in America have no problem with it because they disconnect themselves to the system. They're trying to be so assimilated to this white society that they've taken on these values of their oppressor and all of a sudden it makes sense to them. How does it make sense when they would never do that to them, their people? And if they did, they would come, to, come, to, come up with some law, some justification, some amber rule, something that would, would exempt them from that, from that, from those, from those causes. So it's, just, it's like, it's like the 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 elitist in this community, this 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 society has uh, under, uh, accepted the fact that as long as they're not the ones, then it's acceptable. You know what I'm saying? Until they're the ones. But if you look at the R. Kelly, the Cosby's, um, the Vicks, uh, Little Wayne's, all these individuals who've been in the system, stars, actors who've been in the system, who who. who I, I, you know, I see some advoc you know, I see Jay Z and them advocating um, to try to correct this 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 boulder that's head heading down the hill, uh, which is the criminal justice system. But to me, it, it's it's still not enough because it, it, it it's to, to to reform a system that's broken is to like put brand new wheels on a car that has no engine in it. I mean, that makes no sense. So. So the, the, the reason I get to the youth and the, the flipping, it's not like I said, I heard the gentleman on YouTube talking about how the youth are in prison now and how they're, they'll attack you, but they won't attack the CEOs. The older brunch, they be, they, you know, they put hands on CEOs. And I, I, it's 100%, he's 100% correct. Like, you know, you, you're in a joint, you know, you know uh, because these, these youth is coming in, they're so out of control nowadays. They are... Uh, They'll, 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 they'll 
burn all the bridges in their family, so they got no nothing on commissary. They said they're gonna run in your cell and take something from you, or they're trying to create a situation to take something from you because they have nothing because they destroyed that situation. They're in the joint, and like I said, they they'll they'll let the CEO, basically a female CEO at that, 100 pounds, 100 pounds wet, talk, give them LOP, talk bad to them, tell them what she is, ain't gonna do to them, won't do nothing to her, won't even. They had two words for her, maybe underneath their breath. But they said, you rub up against them, they bumping you, they, they, they quit cutting in front of you in the line, you say something to them, they want to go in the cell and handle it, beat you, try to beat you to a pulp. I mean, and, and you know, however, which way it ever goes, uh, they still, like I said, they still have that, that hatred to someone that looks like them. But it, at the end of the day, that's, that's just how the system works. That's the behaviorism and a psychology that is being utilized to, to, to make the, the person that looks like you look like an enemy. They've done that through slavery. And if we get back into slavery and about the economy of prison, the first economy of these United States was slavery. Slaves were money, slaves were wealth. So think about it. I mean, things, the reason I point this out is because things haven't, as, more as, they, the most, as much as they say things have changed, only thing that's changed is the, 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 the the tightness of the chain around your neck, that gold chain, instead of wearing it around your leg, you're wearing it around your neck now, right? It's platinum, it's gold, you know what I'm saying? They just changed it, right? That, nothing's changed with these individuals. It, nothing, they, they've taken slavery and just, just it, it made it, I guess it made it more popular now. People okay being slaves, you know, because it's not, I guess because it's not called slavery, but believe me, when the first time they gave me my time, I understood what slavery was. I understood it meant sitting on the toilet, with, 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 without having any privacy, right? You know what I'm saying? That means them stripping down, and having no privacy, having them do strip search without having any privacy. Anybody who's been through the joint knows about this. There's no time, they're gonna strip you down, you can't, you can't shit without having any privacy. If you ask them for any privacy, they look at you like you're crazy. You come back off visits, they wanna strip you down and have you uh, lift up your sack and spread your, that's all acceptable. It's, it's, it make it, it makes sense in a long, uh, a long uh, length of things because maybe they found one time or two times someone's bringing in contraband or people are really bring, bringing in contraband that way. Um, so it makes sense to, to do it that way. But majority of the contraband is coming in through COs. But not, I mean, coming to one or two times you find uh, inmate or inmates are willing to bring it in. I'm not going to dispute that. You're definitely right. They're willing to do whatever they need to do to bring in contraband, but. 90% of that, dope. Pornographic magazines. Any contraband they say is contraband is being brought in through CEOs because they can't bring it in. And they're making money off of it. So, so like I so, said, so you got this dichotomy to this system that, 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 that that's, that's like absolute power destroys a person absolutely. You, you, you have a, a concept that, that because these people are criminals, they're, they're lesser. They, 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 they should be treated like slaves. And you have this, this conversation and these people feel like, you know, vindicated by, um, by, by making people suffer, you know, through, through, through their suffer some type of, somehow it vindicates that individual, makes them feel whole. And my conversation is a couple of different conversations like I could cover. First is restorative justice. It's an African understanding of things supposed to be done. People don't, it's not necessary to take a father out the home and send him in prison and make him part of this economic system if he can do better for the house. Why are you taking the only provider out of the house and putting him in prison when he can actually help the family and to make the, make, the, make the United States and make this country stronger? But they don't care about that, right? The other thing is reentry. I mean, the main thing, like, the biggest thing is reentry because right now I'm going through reentry. I've just come off a job interview and um, I think the biggest understanding, the biggest, the hardest thing for me was reentry. You're right. I do all the things necessary. I get my college degree in prison. I take some trades in prison. But the criminal background, forget check the box, forget all that. They pull background checks. So they're not going to hire you specifically based on them pulling a background check. They got YouTube. I mean, they got Facebook. They got all the stuff they need that's necessary for them to pull it. You type a name in right now and it'll show you that this individual has negative stuff in their background. So all this check the box, not check the box, interview, all this stuff. It's like, my understanding is I did time. I was supposed to be rehabilitated. 
I did time for a reason. But how is that felony being utilized after I've done the time and I've served my, I supposedly corrected my wrong? Apparently I haven't because it's still being utilized, in me, utilized against me now for whose benefit? It doesn't benefit me. It doesn't benefit my family. It doesn't benefit all the education I've got. And then we go back to reality. It's like in prison, I had this understanding that I'm going to educate myself as much as possible so when I get out, I'll be able to get a better job. But yet and still, what I find and what and, 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 and somebody proved me wrong is that coming out of prison, the only job they have for you is general labor. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the only job they're willing to... I mean, yeah, you could say your skill level is suited for X, Y, and Z. It might be. But they're going to point to the back, the gap in your background, your criminal background, and here's what you're suited for. You can definitely move out and move up. You definitely can. But initially, coming out, the only thing open to you is going to be general labor, meaning that you're going to be lifting, pushing, pulling, basically doing what mechanical work that they can't have a machine do, you're going to be doing that. So, like I said, it's just, that's re-entry. That's an aspect of re-entry. It's, it's, it's a problem because, again, I had my guy call me up saying they're offering four-year degree programs in prison now. And I'm like, okay, well, if they're, open, if they're offering four-year degree in prison, you can put that in your resume. I can put, I graduated from Harvard on my resume. It really doesn't mean much of anything because what they're looking for is a level of skill level. So if you have no skill level when you went in, you have no skill level, you have no skill level prior, you have no skill level double, you get out, even with a four-year degree, if you've never really done anything, you really can't get anything when you get out, right? So um that's a big that's a big deal. The other thing is a family, integrating back into a family uh surroundings. Now I didn't I I did a lot of time, but I didn't do a lot of time. This guy's done 15, 20, 27, 20 and a half cents, 30, 30 years, and they're getting out. But even a guy who's done uh, a day, 24 hours in prison, you have a hard time acclimating yourself back into reality, what's really going around you, and then implementing yourself back into a family union. Because you're, in prison, you're, you, you, the worst thing you can do is, is formulate a family union within the prison system because, it, um, because you, 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 you really can't, you really don't know everybody's uh, goal uh, in prison and they're not blood so you don't know what's going on but prison doesn't even allow that to happen because you, you know they can move you they can do all these different things to you and doesn't support that family uh, 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 fabric that, that maybe you were used to prior to going in or whatever and some people do become they could join gangs or they join uh, uh, organizations within the prison society and they try to develop some sort of a family understanding, but really family does not exist. So that's the other thing, coming back into the the family unit after being gone, you understand that it moved on without you. Now you're coming back trying to implement yourself. And then it's a lot of scabs and wounds that have not been totally healed. And it's dealing with that aspect of it. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of animosity that you feel throughout the family unit. Um, because you weren't there. I mean, you can't do anything about it because the system pulled you away. You were just a telephone, 15 minute telephone call is all you had. And you can't, I mean, shit, the only thing you can do in 15 minutes is on a sitcom, solve a solution to a family crisis. You can't do it in real life, you know? So it's just, it's just so much stuff that you have to deal with um, coming out, whether it be, and like I said, and, and, and the main thing I want to say to the individuals in there is that you have this sense of understanding because I still talk to guys in the joint now who are telling me the things I need to be, be, be doing, but they're in a the joint. Like they still have this theoretical understanding like you can do this, you can do that, you can do this. Well, the first thing I have to do, like say when that PO picks you up from the joint, he's telling you that you have to have a job. If you don't have a job, that's ultimately a violation of your parole and he can send you back. You have to have housing. Ultimately, if you don't have housing, some same same time, you know, depending on the county commit, you can live in a halfway, you can use a, a homeless shelter, you can be homeless in your county of commit. If it's big enough, you can be homeless uh, in your county. Like you can be homeless on parole, but you can't be on an ISR, and that's how ISR is being utilized. Now, they're backing down a lot of these different things, um, 
I have my own theory about that, but they're backing down like a little ISR. They're trying to go back to use it what it initially was used for with sex offenders. That's how it came out. Then they tried to implement it across the board where everybody had to, but anybody decided they wanted to put an ISR, they're putting an ISR. The county that I went, they had so much money coming through. They just selected individuals, mostly African-Americans, they placed on ISR just because uh, they had the money to do it. A lot of counties who are running into deficits, deficits when it comes to because it takes a lot of band power to work ISR is moving away from ISR. And it, parole is becoming a little bit more doable, you know, at the end of the day. And the, there's a lot of integral parts to parole being doable. The what, first thing is their PO. You know, if he's willing to allow you to do certain things, um, then it allows you to be, to, 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 to function and develop yourself on parole. The other thing is that finding a job, housing, family is all integral parts of it. What you've done in prison prior to getting out, if you sit and played spades and dominoes, your whole bit is going to be tight on you. You know what I'm saying? If you're not educating yourself, you're not getting in a trade, you're not trying to better yourself. And then that in itself is a conversation that needs to be having be, that happens through legislation. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, the, the whole transition through prison. Now I'm against prison. Um, and I'm abolition because I believe that it, it, it doesn't work as it sits and it needs, I'm not an iconoclastic individual, but I believe that the structure itself needs to be based on more of a restorative justice and that the ultimate ob object is not to send a man, place a man in a cell so these Caucasians can benefit and they can hire them, themselves and their brother-in-laws to, 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 to do bids on things that don't need to be fixed so they can continue to, the wealth through the state, that basically their version of state welfare but uh, I believe that it should actually be uh, a, a, like a restorative justice that, that makes the, the community whole, makes the individual whole, and continues to make the family function. I mean, how hard is that? You know what I'm saying? How hard, did it, how hard is it to implement those things within, within a, uh, 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 a system that's been around for the last hundred so, uh, for a century, you know, for at least uh, in this society over a century, you know, still haven't got it right. So, um, like I said, I, you know, um, to, to, to cap this conversation off is that, I, like, the, the first thing, like I said, I, I talk to individuals in a joint on a regular basis. And, I mean, I was that individual, so don't get me wrong. But, I mean, a lot of them are so disconnected from reality that they believe what they're saying, and they believe what they're saying is possible, right? And every, anything's possible, but the probability that it happened is slim to none, right? I mean, reality sets in, right? When you come out, when you see individuals and you understand that you have to take the bus, you have to figure out a bus schedule. And if you're, at, if you're not at X, Y, Z at a certain time on ISR, you might be violated. Regular parole is different. And don't get me wrong, um, it, it's a little bit more uh, conducive to you implementing yourself back into society, but there's still flaws in that, right? They, they won't allow you to make enough money so when you get out, you at least have a chunk of change so you can do the things you need to do. The first thing you have to do is take your little gate fee and if you have nobody giving you fifteen, twenty, a hundred thousand dollars when you walk out the door, you're not pulling up and getting in a phantom, right? You're getting in, you know what I'm saying? You're jumping on a bus or you're getting in your mom's car or reality, your buddy pulling up with a with a fifth or whatever. I mean, your reality, reality is shot. So they took that away that implement a way where you can make minimum wage in prison, right? You can learn a trade in a prison. You can get your license in prison. You can get those things that the society said it needs within prison so you can become an individual who would be an uh, 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 integral part of society. And your implement implementation back into society will be, be streamless, right? And they're not looking at that aspect of it. And what it's called is reentry. A lot of people are coming up with these reentry programs based on state formats that... That, that educate individuals once they get out of prison and show them how to look for jobs and all this other stuff. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you might as well just go. I mean, people, you're getting out making, what, 10, 12, 14. Some people are lucky to make $19, $20 an hour. You're lucky. But you're doing a lot of physical labor work, which, you know, I mean, some people like it. Some people can want to do it. But I'm saying if you spent the last 10, 15 years educating yourself, 
to be at a certain level in prison, you're not really looking at going back into general labor. Of course, you'll do whatever possible to feed your family, but realistically, that's what's, that wasn't your reality in prison, right? You're out, set a business up and, and doing things like that. Now, even with the people would point out like that, I know, I know, I know Joe, he, uh, he's doing well, he got out. The, the programs like the barber program they had in prison, they're setting all that shit down. They're setting that shit down. They're moving away from those things. And not everybody wants to be a barber or everybody can be a barber. Um, so it's so to me, um, I think the reentry per you know making that uh, back in the days, the old times would tell you they had a program. Like when you were getting ready to get out of prison, they would take you to the department store. You would be able to buy clothes. They would help you with a car. They would help you with housing. You know what I'm saying? They would give you concrete blocks. So after being in prison for any amount of time, major they understand majority of shit, all the stuff that you accumulated is gone. So your option is bus, busing, well, goodwill, all this other stuff. And, it, and again, it's like, which part of it did I, was the payment? Was the payment the conviction? Was the payment the time? Is the payment the stigma? What is the payment? What do you, what do you, is it everything? So you just, like for the rest of your life, you're going to be a felon. What, 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 what the penalty needs to be death then? Because basically you're taking individuals out of society, killing them. And you're not giving them the opportunity to get themselves back. So they're going to always be less than anybody, any individual within society. That makes no sense. For a crime you committed, that supposedly the conviction was the judic and the adjudication of the conviction was the, the res resolution to it? Is that what you're telling me? Like, come on, man. This is like, like I said, people are, the, the individuals who are being at the forefront of this conversation are, 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 are derelicts. You're, they're, they're these individuals who've been, Who's been been programmed by the society, been educated by the society to have this 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 conventional understanding of the solutions to this to this problem. This problem is a community oriented program. Uh, 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 the the problem is it should be uh, orchestrated by the community and in every aspect of the criminal justice system. There should be a, a civil individual who's who's who has an individual locked up in prison who's part of that committee, not the victims. Uh, 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 the uh, person who has an individual inside the uh, prison, who's by, whether it be visitation, whether it be legislation, whether it be execution, whatever it is, it should be individuals who have family members on that board. And it, if not, if not, they should be five to five to four in, in, instead of the, the inmates uh, families, because those individuals are the ones who are directly affected by the society. You know what I'm saying about about this is, is criminal justice system. Um, so, like I said, this is this 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 whole uh, understanding, uh, this this whole verbiage, uh, this whole there, there's really no really re way to advocate or get a group of individuals together to push this this conversation forward because you're always going to get some Negro Uncle Tom uh, with with seven thousand stripes on his arm talking about how the criminal justice system works. And that individual is going to get the momentum. You know, they're going to come up with some individual, some scenario, no matter how outlandish, how someone was allowed to go on a furlough and he committed a rape. But you, you got to understand, like, the interworkings of this, this criminal justice system. They select those individuals to go out and do those things to justify their position. And this is a quick example. What I mean is, with, if say if there's a... Like say that when the guard got uh, killed in, at Stillwater, now that has had his, his all all this own variation of it. So I don't want to talk about. I'm just going to talk about what the guards did afterwards, um, and um, to 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 push the fact that they wanted more guards, they wanted more money, and they wanted they wanted they basically wanted to. Uh, uh, make uh the guys in their lives hell the ones that had nothing to do with it hell what they would do is because stillwater always had a welding program plasma well had a plasma cutter they had uh big uh welding tig welding um at that facility and i, and I take i'm not 100 percent sure but i know they had mig mig welding uh at that facility um the administration and the, the guard system is set up you have the ceos rank and file, and you had administration. They don't even see things in the same light. Administration sends it through the office, guards see it through the cells, right? 
So, and the guards were run by the union. So, after that situation happened, they got with the county. All the DAs were prosecuting the, the, the slightest uh, uh, CO attack, no matter what it is, to the fullest. So, they were trying to send you to SEG and give you time once you got out. That's where I come in at because I had got an assault. We'll talk about that later when I was down in Fairboat. But um, they were they were implementing that, right? So every from that point on, any attack on the CEO, no matter what the situation was, they were trying to make you do seg time. Seg time, which was a stretch. Then they were trying to send you off to the streets and book you on the streets. Right, so at a certain particular point after they did the whole lockdown, now remember still, everybody comes off a of lockdown. I come back on the violation, still water, Months after they're saying everybody's off lockdown, Stillwater is still on lockdown. What lockdown is, they're locked down. No showers, no nothing. Now, I'm going to have guys testify to this so my, people don't think I'm making it up. The newspapers, the, the pl place where you get your information from is reporting these guys are off lockdown. Yet still, Stillwater is still on lockdown. And they're they're feeding these guys these bogus, if you've ever been on a lockdown, which I, they feel these, these bogus-ass TV dinners. These bogus ass, you can't get full off anything. So you starve, basically starving yourself. You're not getting any, you're not getting any, uh, there's no visitation, there's no yard, there's no showers, there's no nothing. 